guys welcome to my channel and welcome to the 12 days of Christmas so for today's video I'm going to be talking trash I have so many empties to go over with you guys so if that is something you're interested in seeing just go ahead and keep watching so for today's video I'm gonna title this one a year's worth of empties but it's 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 probably more like two years worth of empties I've been saving some of this stuff since like before I even moved into this house and I've lived here for two years. So I, I've got, I've got, I've got some stuff. I've got some stuff. I really just want to put all of this in the recycling and get it out of my beauty room. So let's just jump right into it. So I've got hair care, I've got skin care, I've got makeup, I've got body care, I've got it all. I know some people don't tend to include like lotions and toothpaste and body wash and shampoo because like congratulations you practice basic hygiene but i did throw some of that stuff in here just if i thought it was maybe something worth talking about so starting off with these these are the palmer's shea formula raw shea balm obviously i love this thing i have been using this for years it is my holy grail moisturizer now this is exactly what it says it is a raw shea butter kind of formula so it is kind of like coconut oil it's more solid when it is cold and then you warm it up and it will liquefy in your hands i have not found anything that moisturizes me like this does but just be warned, this is an oil. So you are gonna have that really greasy feeling. If you hate that, do not. Don't even try this. I think these are maybe like seven bucks at Walmart. I have repurchased them for years. I already have another one open. I'm sure I've used more than these. I've just only saved these three containers, but I love this stuff. Just one thing to note, because it is an oil, it will kind of soak into your clothes and your bed sheets and it will leave residue on your bathtub. It definitely has its drawbacks, but I feel like the sheer level of moisture you get out of this product kind of outweighs the aforementioned side effects, if you will. Now, I only use this at night. I would never dare put this on and try to put on like a pair of jeans. Obviously, I love these. Would definitely recommend if you don't have a problem with a greasy kind of feeling. So next up here, I do have two other moisturizers. I was trying to kind of look for an alternative to that one in the summertime because you're not fully covered when you're in bed at night and it's hot. I kind of wanted something that wouldn't get on my bed sheet, but I tried both of these. This is the Cantu Skin Therapy Shea Butter Enriched with Butters and Vitamin E. And this is the Live Clean Argan Oil Replenishing Body Lotion. It is very difficult to find a cruelty-free, more natural kind of moisturizer. My skincare, body care, makeup routine is not 100% cruelty-free, but I definitely do try to shop responsibly and always choose those options when they are available to me. So I tried both of these out. They were okay. They're all right, they did the job, uh, nothing to write home about. They definitely did not replace my shea balm. I love that thing and a regular lotion just, it just doesn't hold a candle to how soft that thing makes your skin. So if I just couldn't find the shea balm, I only ever find that at Walmart. So if for some reason I ran out and these were available somewhere else, I might grab probably this one over this one. This wasn't a little too watery for me. But other than that, I wouldn't repurchase these unless I kind of had to. So next up, I have a body wash here. This is the Dove Sensitive Skin Hypoallergenic Moisture Renew Blend and Nourishing Body Wash. So fun fact, Dove is actually cruelty free. I did not know they were. Maybe it's a recent change. So this was actually purchased by my fiance. He has really sensitive skin. He didn't love it. So I actually put him on to my Shea Moisture Black African Soap. I have been using those bars of soap for years and years and years. That is the very first product I ever switched over to using when I kind of started learning more about toxic ingredients in our body care and all this, you know, chemicals and dyes and stuff that you really just don't want to be putting on your skin. So I put him onto that one. He ended up preferring that. So now he buys the Shea Moisture and I am just using up whatever of these he had left. So overall, I don't mind this actually. I still have one in the shower. Uh, love that it's cruelty-free. I didn't know that, so Dove is cruelty-free if you are looking for that kind of product. 
it's okay. It's a body wash. It washes my ass. I don't know what to tell you. So would repurchase this one. It's it's fine. It does the job. So next up, I've got a couple shampoos and conditioners. Let's let's just start with this one. This is the Garnier Fructis Damage Eraser Fortifying Conditioner. Um, this was given to me by my sister. She bought them and didn't love them, so she gave me a couple. This smells amazing. It is not cruelty-free, so it wouldn't be something I would repurchase, but I think I have maybe one more. I am going to use it because I have it. I am not one for expensive hair products. I've got too much of it to be spending a lot of money on it. So it does say that it has plant-based keratin, it is paraben-free, and it is a vegan formula, so like... You almost had it, but it's not cruelty free, so you kind of miss the mark. But other than that, it smells great, it does the job. I will continue to use the one that I have just because I have it, but would not repurchase because it is not cruelty free. Next, I have a shampoo. I have been using this brand for many, many, many years. This is Clear Scalp and Hair Therapy, the Total Care Nourishing Shampoo. I don't even know if they really make this brand anymore. They used to have a ton of different options. There was like the color treated, the moisture, the total care. I think I maybe see like one option of these at Walmart when I go now. Not that I'm buying anymore. So I have had these for so long. When this was a new brand, they constantly had coupons in the newspaper, buy one, get one free. So I bought one and got one free over and over and over and over again until I had like 30 of them stockpiled. Um, I am still going through that stockpile. So because these were purchased so long ago, it really was before I started to educate myself more on clean items and clean beauty products and chemicals and stuff like that. So this is just, it's so bad. It's got dyes, it's got red 40, it's got sulfates, it's got everything you don't want in your hair care. But honestly, I really just like how these wash my hair. I like the shampoo, I like the conditioner, I've been using this for so long, I've tried to replace it with other stuff, but it's just, it's good. I like this one. Um, once I run out, I do have a few bottles left. I will not probably be repurchasing just because I do want to find a clean, cruelty-free option, but I still have maybe like six, six bottles of this left, so I am gonna run through what I use, but Hopefully I will have found a better, cleaner, cruelty-free replacement for this before then. So next up, I have this shampoo. There's conditioner too. I recycled the bottle. I wanted to get rid of it. So this is the Love Beauty and Planet Shea Butter and Sandalwood Purposeful Hydration Sulfate-Free Shampoo. First of all, I love what the brand stands for. I love how clean this product is. It's got no sulfates, no silicones, no parabens, no dyes, no gilt. Bottle made from 100% recycled plastic, cruelty-free and vegan. Yes, organic coconut oil, shea butter, ethically sourced sandalwood. Certified cruelty-free, yes, plant-based cleansers. Yes, formulated without phthalates. This has everything I want and more, except being good for my hair. I have been trying to get through this godforsaken bottle of shampoo for years. I brought this with me when I moved into this house. I have lived here for almost exactly two years. There is still a tiny bit left in the bottle. I'm counting this as done. I try to mix this in with whatever other shampoo I'm using, like my clear one, just to get rid of it. I love, love how this smells. Let me not say this is an absolutely horrible product. I love how this smells. It smells incredible. Um, it just makes my hair feel so dry. I don't know if it's the coconut oil. First of all, coconut oil wreaks havoc on my hair. I don't know how people soak their hair in that stuff and think it comes out softer. Coconut oil makes my hair feel like a scarecrow's ass. It's horrible. So I don't know if it's the coconut oil. I don't know if it's because it doesn't have the silicones and all that stuff in it. It just makes my hair feel so dry. I had to use so much of the conditioner to counteract the dryness of the shampoo that it just, it wouldn't even make sense for me to use this. Even though I love, 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 love what it stands for, love how clean of a product it is. Maybe I would pick up something else from the brand to see if maybe it's just this particular, I don't know, it says pampering moisture for dry hair though. How? Purposeful hydration, how? Not for me. Not for my particular hair type. I do have pretty fine hair, so 
I'm not gonna crap on this brand. I think it's doing an amazing job with what it stands for. This particular product just does not work for my hair type. So I'm gonna count this one as done. And no, I would not repurchase this. I would consider purchasing the conditioner and using it with a different shampoo. That I would consider, so there's that one. So next up for shampoo and conditioner, I have these two Brazilian Joya shampoos from Sol de Janeiro. I got these two little samples. I think I got one in a boxy charm and I picked up the other one in a boxy pop-up just so that I could have the set. I do have a tiny bit left in the bottom of both of these. You better believe I'm gonna put some water in this one, shake it up and get that little bit out because if you don't do that, we're not in the same tax bracket. Um, this smells divine. Oh, it's on my hand. Listen, the Sol de Janeiro scent, the Bum Bum Cream scent. I just want my entire world to smell like that. And I actually kind of like these. I was hoping I wouldn't. I was hoping I wouldn't because these are pretty pricey. I do believe the full sizes are maybe 20 something dollars a piece. I would not dare spend $20 on a shampoo and conditioner. That's just insane to me. But these are actually really good. I took this little set to Hawaii with me and I really enjoyed how my hair felt. I was kind of expecting this to be a product that you buy more just for the novelty of the scent. And honestly, I love the smell of the Bum Bum Cream, but like, you're buying it for the smell. It's not gonna make your ass any firmer. It's not gonna get rid of your cellulite. It's honestly not even all that moisturizing. Don't tell them I said that, I love the brand. But I thought this was gonna be more like, you buy it for the smell. They're good. They actually really made my hair feel nice, and if there was a sale, if maybe I had a really good coupon code or something, I would consider picking up the full sizes of these. I actually really enjoyed them, and you cannot beat this smell. So, I would actually recommend these. I like these a lot. So, next up here, I do have two of the Batiste Original Dry Shampoos. I wash my hair once a week. I know that sounds kind of gross, but I've got a lot of it. It's a task. It's just not worth washing multiple times because honestly, I work at a warehouse. My hair is rolled up in a messy bun a majority of the time. I only wear my hair down for filming, which kind of sucks because I film Saturday afternoon and I wash my hair Saturday night. So it's definitely not at its peak performance for filming. So that is why I picked these up. Um, I like them. They work fine. They do what they need to do. I have repurchased. I probably will continue to repurchase and they're great. They do what they need to do. Smells fine. It doesn't leave much of a white cast. I do kind of have to brush it through to make sure I don't have any crazy powdery looking stuff in my hair for filming, but these work great. Have repurchased, will repurchase, will continue to use. Next up, I have one more body care kind of item here. This is the Cremo Moisturizing Shaving Cream. First of all, this brand says it was started by two men. It's called Cremo. I would have guessed. No woman is gonna call a brand Cremo. But um, I do like this, actually. So this is coconut mango scented. They also have a lavender. I despise the smell of lavender, so I always buy this one. It is a really nice product because it is a concentrate. It's not like a shaving foam. It's more of a like really thick cream and you only need a tiny bit and you can rub it all over and it actually a little bit goes a very long way. It has pretty good ingredients. I've been using this for a couple years as well. This thing lasts me forever. I don't shave all that often, <laughs> but I have a really sensitive skin as well. So shaving can really, really irritate my legs. I don't get that with this product. It is slick enough that you're not gonna get razor burn or bumps with this. I love this stuff. I've been using it for a while now and I have repurchased and I will continue to repurchase. So highly recommend this shaving cream, especially if you have sensitive skin. So next up, let's talk armpits. Can you tell which deodorant I like? So this is actually the Ivory brand deodorant. They are cruelty free, aluminum free and incredibly affordable. I have been through the ringer with aluminum free deodorants, let me tell you. I wish I had saved every single aluminum free deodorant that I have tried over the last few years. Boy. So deodorant is probably one of the very first things I traded out of my routine as well once I started learning about, you know, toxic chemicals and stuff in our beauty products. 
Aluminum is very harmful to be using in your deodorant. There's tons of reasons for that. I'm not going to get into all of that, but um, I've, I've been through it. I have tried almost every brand up under the sun. These are literally like three bucks. Um, I've got the hints of oatmeal smell. I've got coconut scent. I have got hints of aloe. These are all very nice. When you transition to an aluminum free deodorant, there's a process and it's not a good smelling one. So finding one that really holds up to mustiness is a task and I have tried many. I have used some that worked really well at first and then made my armpits feel like the fiery pits of hell. I don't know how that happens. Um, I've tried some that just don't work. I have a very physically demanding job. Sometimes it is incredibly hot at my job. I work near like football field sized ovens. It's warm. So I need something that's gonna work. And this one has been the best one that I have found as of recently. I obviously have repurchased many. I will continue to repurchase. However, I only ever find these at Walmart. So I just had to buy a different brand. I think I bought Jason brand. It's not, it's not the same as this one. So I will repurchase this one as soon as I get to Walmart because I like this. It works. It is affordable. It is not tested on animals. It is aluminum free and it's all that good stuff. So Highly recommend if you are looking for an aluminum free deodorant that is affordable. Next up, I've got toothpaste. Yes, this is my toothpaste. So this one here is the Uncle Harry's Natural Products Alkalizing Toothpaste. I love this stuff so much. Obviously, I have been using it for a while. I know I've used up more than these. I just didn't save the little jar. And these are actually glass jars so you can wash these out save them and reuse them for something else this is a clay kind of toothpaste so definitely not your conventional toothpaste so this is made with all natural ingredients it's got stuff like mineral clay sea salt pure plant essences um, it remineralizes your teeth it supplies calcium magnesium phosphorus it's got bentonite clay, calcium carbonates, colloidal silver water, sea salt, ionic minerals, mustard seed, essential oils, eucalyptus, clove, oregano, all kinds of good stuff. I prefer the spearmint flavor. It is my favorite, but I also have the peppermint one here. This one is a little bit harder to find. I do buy these in like value packs. I always buy either sets of like three. I actually bought a set of six last time I ordered because I order these on Amazon. I will try my best to link them down below. They are not always always available so that is why I tend to buy a value set just so that I know I have them and because I have to order them on Amazon I don't want to not have toothpaste. I have run out a few times and had to use conventional toothpaste. Why is there so much sweetener added to conventional toothpaste? This definitely has a different taste. It is not sweet. It is very minty. This definitely takes some getting used to. I love it. I do not like using conventional toothpaste after using this for so long. I highly, highly recommend. It is fluoride free, which is very important to me. There are definitely mixed feelings on fluoride. I will definitely link this down below, link the Amazon shop. So check out these products. I love them. If you are looking for a more natural kind of toothpaste, 10 out of 10 recommend my favorite. So next up, I've actually got two lotions from Bath and Body Works and these are their body creams. This is the gingerbread latte scent and this one is, boy, when I tell you I'm getting every last bit out of here, I take these to work and keep them in my locker because I work in a freezer so my hands get incredibly dry. So, so I take this to work and like my fiance laughs at me because I will have him like squeeze every last bit out of here. Like help me empty this out. He said, I'm surprised you don't cut this thing open, which I might have considered 
if I wasn't gonna make this video. But this one here is Frosted Coconut Snowball. I do enjoy these for like my hands or maybe a little bit before work. Not something I wear like to bed or anything, but they smell great. The Frosted Coconut Snowball was incredible and it's iridescent and it has snowflakes on it. Probably why I bought it. Uh, Gingerbread Latte is one of my favorite scents from them. So love these. Have a bunch on deck. I always have one in my locker at work. I always have one in my room. I enjoy these. I get them buy three, get three free. Always. They are pretty good. They do the job. They make your hands feel very soft. I'm pretty sure there is dimethicone in here though. Yes, there is dimethicone in these products. So it's like, it's an artificial soft. Your hands feel soft because there's dimethicone on them. But I always keep some of these on hand. I do enjoy them and I will continue to use these. And I actually have a Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte Fragrance Mist from Bath & Body Works as well. This smells incredible. This is like my signature fall scent. I love this. Smells so good. I already have a backup. Like I said, when they are buy three, get three free. I stock up. I stock up. My sister goes through these like water. I know you're watching. I don't know if she pops the sprayer off and just pours it over her head. But these are great, they are always on sale, they smell good, they last all day, and Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte is one of my favorites, so I did finish up one of these. So next up I have a couple toners and some face washes and stuff, so starting with the Pharmacy Deep Sweep 2% BHA Pore Cleaning Toner. Um, this I got in a BoxyCharm, it was okay. It did what it had to do, you know, I didn't notice any extreme difference. A lot of the skincare stuff that's going to be coming up from like boxy charms, I just kind of use it to use it. They're not like holy grails or anything I'm going to go out and repurchase. And this is okay, it did its job. Would I repurchase this? No, because I actually missed my holy grail toner when I was using this one. So I used it up, it worked fine, it was okay, no complaints, but you know, Nothing to rave about either, so would not repurchase, but it was a good product. And next I have my Holy Grail toner. I have been saving these for so long, I have two different bottles because they repackaged everything. So this is the Humphreys Witch Hazel Toner. It is pure, organic, 100% natural, genuine, distilled, astringent. That's a mouthful. Uh, gentle cleansing, non-drying. This one here is actually um, with aloe included. They have a bunch of different ones of these now. This is the original from back in the day. They don't make this packaging anymore. They have upgraded it to this bottle, which is really cute actually. So it does say we never test on animals and contains no animal ingredients, so that is great. I love this stuff. I actually notice a difference when I don't have it. I always use it after I get out the shower at night. Even if I double cleanse, I still find that I sometimes have like a little bit of mascara left on or something like that. This gets everything off. I feel like it really gives my skin a true cleaning after everything. My pores look better when I use this. I'm actually out of this right now. I haven't been to Walmart in a minute, so I do pick this up at Walmart. It's like 10 bucks. It does last a while though. I only use a little bit on a little cotton round or something. I love this stuff. This is definitely a holy grail kind of product for me. I would highly recommend these if you are looking for a toner that is really going to like really clean your skin. You know that there is nothing left on your skin after you use these. There's no residue. It's not weird or gross feeling. It's not drying. I never get dryness on my skin from using these. So would highly recommend holy grail status right here. Next up, I have these First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. Helps exfoliate, tone, and brighten. Um, I got these in a boxy charm as well. I actually, like, never remember to use these. I just took out the last, like, four that were dried out last night for this video. This is just not something I remember to use. It's kind of like a toning step. Um, it was okay. Just not something I remembered to use all that often. Even when I had it out on my dresser, I just wouldn't reach for it. So not something I'm going to repurchase because I just really don't use products like this, but it was okay. So next up, I've got some face washes, and this here is the 4th Ray Beauty BFD Cleansing Oil. This product I really enjoyed. I was looking for something to really, really get my eye makeup off. I like this a lot. I just repurchased one in the Black Friday sale. So this is something I could see myself continuing to use. 
I do enjoy it. It is cruelty free. When I say I'm going to use this forever, is this like holy grail status? Maybe not, but I have already repurchased it, so I did enjoy it enough to do that. And I would recommend. It's really, really good at breaking down your makeup. So if you're looking for something to really get that eye look off, this is really good. So next up here, I have the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Cleanser. This I got in a boxy pop-up. I did want to try it out. I got it for cheap, so that's really the only reason I bought this. It was okay. It was a nice moisturizing cleanser. It was nothing to write home about. It did its job. My face felt moisturized, I guess. This is probably not something I would repurchase. Definitely not at full price. Probably not even on sale. It was okay. It just didn't do enough that I'm like, wow, I need this. Not gonna repurchase it, but you know, just one of those okay products. And next up, we have this putrid atrocity. I might go get some rubber gloves just to show this to you. This is the Kylie Skin Foaming Face Wash. This was clear when I got it. This came in a boxy term. I don't know. It's become a balsamic vinaigrette. Um, this is disgusting. I feel like it's going to grow legs and walk away. I have been saving this just for the purpose of showing you how horrendous this actually looks. This happened very soon after I got it. This is not because it's been sitting around for a while. I was using it. I used a good amount of it. It was a decent cleanser. But over time, it just started getting a hint of color, and then it got a little darker, and it got a little darker, and now it is completely aged to a fine wine. I would never would never purchase anything from Kylie Skin. I didn't actually buy it, it came to BoxyCharm, so glad I didn't spend my money on it. I've actually gone into Ulta and seen the freaking tester they have out on the counter, and it looks like this too. Like, this is not an isolated incident, this is not that I got a bad one, this just happened. I don't know if it's some sort of reaction, I don't know if it's one of the ingredients in it, it's disgusting, I can't wait to throw this thing out, I can't even, I can't. I can't look at it anymore. So next up, I have some more skincare, and I have a ton of these little face milks and face serums from 4th Ray Beauty. Um, I did buy like a little sample set. I believe it had maybe these five face milks in it. Um, I do enjoy this product. The, where is it? The avocado face milk and the Avocado and Aloe Double Shot Serum are probably my two favorites. Um, the Avocado and Aloe I have repurchased many times. Very moisturizing, feels nice. I love Avocado and Aloe for my skin. I have the Radiate Vitamin C Serum. This was okay, but I believe it had red dye number 40 in the ingredients, so probably not something I'm going to repurchase. In terms of all these little like face milks and face serums, they're all very good. Um, some of them say like resurfacing and brightening and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think any of them is actually going to make a huge difference, but I do enjoy throwing these on before I put my makeup on. I have repurchased. I just picked up a couple of skincare things from 4th Ray Beauty in their Black Friday sale. So overall, would recommend. They are pretty affordable. Would highly recommend. Again, not going to make a revolutionary difference in your skin. But they are very nice. And again, the avocado and aloe is my absolute favorite. So next up here, I am just going to lump a bunch of these together. I've got a bunch more uh, skincare serum kind of items. These two I want to talk about individually. These are from Earth Harbor Natural. I've got the Helios Anti-Pollution Youth Ampule and the Aurora Superfood Luminance Ampule. These are very good. I got these in a boxy pop-up. I loved these. These are pure facial oils. There's nothing but essential oil ingredients in these. They are a little bit pricier. I think they're around $30-ish on their website. I don't know if I would spend 30 something dollars on them, but I loved them when I used them. I would definitely have repurchased them if I ever ordered from the pop-up shop again. I love the ingredients, very natural, clean products. These were very, very nice. If you are looking for a good quality, pure, essential face oil, I would highly recommend you try out Earth Harbor Naturals. And all of these are just BoxyCharm stuff. Notable mentions. This one, Elemis, smells like rose, hate it. Forced myself to use this, I hate the smell of rose. It's an okay face oil. 
Um, this one, Volition, I actually enjoyed. This one made my skin feel very soft. This is the Snow Mushroom Water Serum. Okay, would I pay full price for it? Probably not. Don't know how much it cost. Don't want to know. But it was good. Kate Somerville. This probably cost half your kidney. Um, it was okay. Anything memorable? Not really. Not something I'm definitely gonna go out and spend full price on. I used it because I had it. Nothing notable to even mention. Um, same thing with this one. It was okay. Um, this one as well. I purchased this in a boxy pop-up. It's the tomato serum. It's okay. It's a face oil. It makes your skin feel soft. No real difference. This one, the Skin Ink. I don't like this one. It had like fish collagen in it or some stuff. Used it just to use it. Would not repurchase. Uh, this one, the Pharmacy Honey Grail Ultra Hydrating Face Oil. This was probably my favorite out of that bunch. It felt really nice. It had a very subtle honey smell to it. Very moisturizing. Very good facial oil. Um, would I consider repurchasing? Not at full price. Maybe in like a boxy pop-up kind of situation. But would recommend this one if you are looking for a good facial oil. Next, I have this Hydro Glow Sleep Serum Triple Action Hyaluronic Acid. This is another uh, boxy charm kind of item. Used it because I had it, and the most memorable thing about this is that it smells like used popsicle sticks. It smells like I just got done with a rocket pop. That's all I have to say. Um, not in a horrible way, it's not gross, but that's just all I could think of when I was using this. Again, I didn't notice any major differences. I just used this up recently. Would I repurchase this? No, um, it was just there. So not a bad product, but not anything really memorable about it either. So next up, I have this Touch and Soul Glassy Skin Balm. This is another BoxyCharm item. It was pretty good. It was a nice moisturizer. I enjoyed using it under my makeup. Again, nothing too extraordinary to say about this one. Uh, skincare has to really, really be memorable for it to be something that I repurchased multiple times. So would I repurchase this? No, it didn't do anything significantly beneficial to my skin for me to go out of my way to get this, but it was a good product. I enjoyed it while I had it. And last up for skincare here, I have the Saturday Skin Yuzu Vitamin C Sleep Mask. This one was nice. It smelled very fresh. It felt like you were rubbing fresh lemon curd on your skin. That sounded really weird, um, but this was nice. It felt fresh, it felt moisturizing, it smelled lovely. Not something I would repurchase. Again, it didn't do anything revolutionary to my skin, but it was definitely pleasant to use. So let's start with mascara. I'm more than certain I have more than these as well. Um, can you guess what my holy grail mascara is? This is the Essence Lash Princess. My absolute favorite is the purple one, the Sculpted Volume. Um, I do also have here the False Lash Effect. I also have the Waterproof. I love these. I have tried the pink one, the new one. That's trash. Don't get the pink one. Um, go with the purple one for sure. I love the wand. Oh my god, it's so old I can't even open it. I love the shape of the wand on these. Um, mascaras do tend to transfer onto my lid when I am putting them on. I don't know if I just have like fat eyelids or something, but this shape is perfection. It just sits so perfectly right on your lid, on your lash line. It doesn't smudge on me. It doesn't transfer to my lid. My lashes look amazing. I am wearing it today. I have backups of these. Favorite mascara. Hands down. Love this stuff. Cannot beat this mascara for this price. So I do have one of the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. I haven't used this in years. This is so old. Um, this used to be my holy grail before I discovered the Essence Mascara. L'Oreal is not cruelty free. So I did love this mascara a lot. I just wanted a cruelty free option. So... That is why I no longer use this one. I don't love the wand on this one in particular. I'm not a huge fan of these like hourglass wand shapes. This is pretty much a dupe for the Too Faced Better Than Sex, except this one is amazing, that one is garbage. So um, 
I do enjoy this, but it is not cruelty free. This is like a cult classic. Everyone loves this. It's a great mascara. It's just not something I repurchased at this point because of the cruelty free status. That's it. Um, next up here, I've got one from Laura Geller. I can't even remember if this was good or not. Got it in a boxy charm, used it because I had it. That's it. Nothing more to say about that one. This one is the Superhero Mascara by It Cosmetics. Again, got it in a boxy charm. It was okay. Again, none of these hold a candle to my holy grail, so I just used it because I had it. And next up, I have this one from e.l.f., and this is the Mineral Volumizing Mascara. This I have had for many, many years. Um, I'm pretty sure it sucked. That's why I'm throwing it out. This is probably still pretty much full. I did not enjoy it. It did not do anything for me. That I do remember. If I don't remember anything, it's that it sucked. There you go. That's it. I got nothing more. Okay, home stretch. I've got a few more makeup products here, and I'm going to start with this. This is the Pretty Vulgar, the Powder Room Matte About It Translucent Setting Powder. Um, this I also got in a boxy charm. I started using it because I didn't want it to go to waste. I had had it for a while, and I just started setting my eyelids and under my eyes. This was actually pretty good. I enjoyed every last bit of it. It did pretty well. Um, it didn't stop my concealer from creasing a hundred percent not gonna repurchase just because even though it was a pretty okay powder i do want to try more stuff in different brands so overall not bad definitely used every last drop and it came in handy good product let's talk brows so first up um real quick i have this wet n wild brow obsessive brow gel this was recommended to me by a fellow youtuber Unfortunately, it is just not strong enough to hold up my brows. I don't know if it is just this thick Mediterranean hair that I have that this, it, nothing works. I actually uh, sprayed this spoolie with hairspray today and tried to comb my brows up. That's, that's where I'm at with the brow gel. That's it. So not a bad product she really enjoyed it it just didn't really seem to work for me so when i repurchased this one but i am glad i tried it out next up for brow gels let me tell you i love ColourPop. if you have watched any video on my channel i am a walking talking billboard for ColourPop. they are my favorite brand me and ColourPop brow products we don't mix oil and water they just don't work for me so this is the ColourPop brow boss gel in the shade clear this is so many people's holy grail this does nothing this does nothing for my eyebrows absolutely nothing this was useless this was might as well have been water in a tube for me would not recommend if you love it i'm glad it works for you it did nothing for me so there's that one and again, for ColourPop brow products, I have here their Brow Boss Pencil in the shade Soft Black. This was a joke. This was a joke. I'm pretty sure it broke and fell out because there's no way I use this. This did nothing. This did not show up. I had to press this pencil into my freaking cranium to even get any kind of pigment. I don't know if I am just used to a more creamy brow product that is more pigmented this was very very waxy like like i might as well have scraped out a black candle and try to use it for my eyebrows this was so bad like when i tried this i don't even know how ColourPop had the audacity to sell this that's how badly this worked for me so we're not done yet so this is the feather effect styling wax in the shade clear boy this looked great for maybe 30 minutes this was the best out of the worst um it would style my brows nicely i could get a nice feather effect but very very soon after i used it my brows would start to fall again maybe it is just my eyebrows i don't know if i just have really thick hairs i don't know if it's because i do have fuller brows naturally it just didn't work for me i could forcefully make it work okay but it just didn't work out um wouldn't repurchase unless i absolutely had no other option i had exhausted all other affordable methods of feathering my brows 
this would be maybe like a last resort repurchase. But again, that could just be me and my eyebrows. And one brow product that I actually very much enjoyed, this is the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen in the shade Black. This I liked. The first time I tried it, I think I actually used it in like a trying new makeup kind of video. I did not like it. I thought I looked crazy. It definitely took some getting used to. You might look a little crazy when you first try it out. This is one of those brush tip pen kind of situations. Once I got the hang of it, once I figured out how to really make it work the way I needed it to, I very much enjoyed this. I am wearing it today. I am trying to squeeze every last little bit of pigment out of this that I can. I'm glad I have this. I have already repurchased it and I definitely, definitely recommend this one. Few more things here. I have got this iconic London Prep Set Glow setting spray. It is pure metallic copper. It is horrible. It smells like an old lady's underwear drawer. Don't ask. Um, this is bad. It is straight up glittery. It is spitty. It is just water droplets on your... It's bad. It's horrible. I forced myself to use it. There's obviously still some in the bottom. I'm counting this as done because I never want to see it again. Um, I have here a Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation and this is the dewy version. I have also used up some of the matte version. Um, this is my everyday foundation. I don't wear foundation all over my face when I go to work. I just put it under my eyes and on my eyelids. That is what I use this for. I love the finish of the dewy one. However, it does crease on my lids almost immediately, but I have oily lids, so kind of my fault, not the product's problem, but I do enjoy these. I have it in the shade Light Medium, Buff Bisque Light Medium. So I do like these. I have another one I'm using now. I don't know if I will repurchase them because Wet n Wild has lost their cruelty-free status, but as for a really affordable foundation option, these are really, really nice. So would recommend if you are looking for a drugstore foundation. Next up here, I have panned a butter bronzer. This is not the first butter bronzer that I have used up. I believe this is the second one. I have this in the shade Deep Bronzer. I love this. This is like a holy grail. I use it every single day for work. I use it when I film. I have another one that I have already hit pan on. Um, I have probably one more backup, but they have also lost their cruelty-free status. Um, I do have some backups. I will continue to use it as long as I have it. Will I repurchase afterwards? I'm not sure. I do love the product, but being cruelty-free is important to me, so I don't know. But I love it. It's a cult classic. Everyone loves it. So I have used up a whole butter bronzer. I'm pretty sure two at this point, and I've panned another one, so... That says a lot. So last product up here, I have used up an entire highlighter. Yes, completely panned, it is empty. I scraped every little bit out of the corners and I used every drop. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. I believe it was the shade Golden Flower Crown. Maybe, it obviously fell apart. Um, this is a pretty good highlighter. I know everyone lost their sheet when these came out. It's a great highlighter. It's like four bucks. Really nice, really blinding, nice formula. It's a great drugstore option. I use this pretty much every single day. This is like my work highlighter. I have a couple more of them. I don't love the shades as much as I loved this one, but not gonna repurchase this one because cruelty-free status. But um, I have a ton of other highlighters. I would rather get use out of what I already own than repurchase something that I have clearly used and abused and gotten my money's worth, my $4.95 worth out of this product. It's great. If you are looking for a drugstore option, these Mega Glow highlighters are really nice and they have them in a ton of different shades at this point. Really good. Would recommend. You don't need to spend a ton of money to get good beauty products. Definitely don't count out brands like Wet n Wild and Elf and stuff like that because there's some really good stuff. I think that's it. I feel like I have some more stuff somewhere. There are some items that I remember thinking about, talking about, and I didn't see them in this bag. So maybe it's for the best. Hopefully they've already been recycled. I don't even want to think about it. All I want to do is dump this entire bag into my recycling bin. That's probably gonna be a mess. 
I'm just gonna put the whole bag right in the recycling bin and call myself free of these empty bottles that have been hanging around for so long. So I will try to link some of the more memorable products. I'm definitely not gonna link everything, but I will try to link anything that I recommended, anything I really enjoyed, so that if you wanted to try them out, you can find them down in my description box. And boy, I talked really fast for the last hour and I need to go to work. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to come back for the rest of the 12 days of Christmas. And I hope that you would consider liking, subscribing, and coming back for some more content. Bye.